This is a HeadGum Podcast. Think I'm going for a walk now. I feel a little unsteady. I don't want no one to follow me, except maybe you. I could make you happy, you know, if you weren't already. I could do a lot of things, and I do. Tell you the truth, I prefer the worst of you. Too bad you had to have a better half. She's not really my type, but I think you two are forever. And I hate to say it, but you're perfect together. That is my spoken word rendition of Untouchable Face by Annie DeFranco. The year is 2001. What's happening in the year 2001? Well, I'm going to give you a 2001 history snapshot according to popculture.us. As we all know, the top song of 2001 was All For You by Janet Jackson, a song I still absolutely adore. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, as well as The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and Shrek all came out in 2001. That is an insane box office year. Something that I know everyone is dying to know is, what was the price of postage stamps in 2001? Well, it was 34 cents, honey, and now I think it's like 41 or some shit. Who knows? Also, 85% lean ground beef was $1.49 a pound. Why do they put this on? This is not pop culture. Um, iPod first gen, $3.99 retailing. The world population was 6.1 billion. The Segway PT was introduced. And the iPod, what, yeah, the iPod was released and it had been designed under the code name Dulcimer. Who knew? And where were we when the iPad's code name was Dulcimer? Where were we when Shrek was hitting the theaters? Why, we were in literal New York City. And we are Naomi Ekperigan. <laughs> Naomi! Do you know a postage stamp is 58 cents now? Shut 58, up! 58, Henny. It went Insane. up 20 cents in, I guess, a cent a year, basically. 24 cents. I know. It's insane. And it's like, you know people don't even want to mail letters. So how dare you make it more expensive? You need to be giving us money back <laughs> for mailing a letter. You know what I mean? No, you need to be thanking us for mailing a letter. I should be receiving a thank you note after I send a letter. And that thank you note should contain 58 cents. Do you know what I mean? Like a reimbursement. <laughs> It's like when you get an email from the March of Dimes. Have you ever gotten like a that like um, mail from the March of Dimes and it'll have like a dime in it? Yes, 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 yes. Which I just think is money down the drain. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> but it's like that. They should be giving us coins back in the mail. Naomi, I am like, you know, I've been dying to have you on any podcast I've ever had in the past. <laughs> and I am so thrilled that you agreed to come on to my show because I just like have to know from the jump, like, who were you? What was going on? What was your vibe? What was your high school like? What was going on in the world of Naomi? Oh, God, it's so funny because I do think I've blocked high school out now, which is unfortunate because that's my novel. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I I went to, you know, a, a private school, the Dalton School on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, honey. Where well, my grandmother went. Yes, we forget you are white royalty. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You come from moneyed whites. I forget that. Um. <laughs> and, and she was there too when it was like all girls so your grandma yes. was like oh gee yes. like I imagine I imagine Dalton back in the day like those Madeline books you yeah. know like girls yeah. in a line <laughs> with their little hats and their little coats and they're yeah. all like yeah two by two <laughs> <laughs> so you went to Dalton which is a very yes. very prestigious private high school in New York City proper Yes, yes. I started there in sixth grade. Wow. Uh, and was there until the end, Henny, the bitter end. Um, and it was, it's funny because, like, I went, my mom sent me there because I was, like, going to school in Harlem, this Catholic school, and I think it was when she found out that I was grading spelling tests that she was like, oh, no, 
we need to take you somewhere to be challenged. And I was like, I don't want to be challenged. Wait, you were grading your class's spelling tests when yes. you were in the sixth grade? in fifth grade? grade, I was grading the test, and I wasn't allowed to participate in the spelling bees anymore because I was always winning. And they were like, why don't you just go somewhere? And that was, like, very <laughs> upsetting because spelling bees were my jam. So... Yeah. That you and I could not have been more opposite because when I, I like could not <laughs> spell to save my life and I actually would like sweet talk. I remember this kid who sat next to me. His first name was Michael. I forget his last name, but in like the second grade, he would get 100s on the spelling test and I would fail and I would <laughs> convince him to swap tests with me when it was graded and I would erase his name and put my name but it would, to bring home to my parents. <laughs> So that they could like see, but my name was in completely different handwriting than this right. like kids. The like, rest of the test, up. yeah, like red rum handwriting. <laughs> um, damn. So you went, you left to be put into a more challenging educational Ugh. institution. And honey, talk about a challenge, both educationally and emotionally and socially. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like where to start. Where I know. do we start? I don't know, dude. I think by the by high school things were a little bit better. Was it a huge adjustment for you going from the school that you started at to then entering that kind of like really competitive private school system? Absolutely. It was also terrifying. And it was also like, you know, I didn't know mean girls yet. Right. And I think that could have been to, due to age. I mean, because there were a couple girls who were like mean in, you know, fifth grade and stuff. Oh, my God. I had a nemesis. Her name was January Johnson, which I uh. mean, if that's not the name of an evil person <laughs> yeah. in middle school. Um, <laughs> so, like, there were mean girls, but I think there was like this level of, you know, I think there's one thing to be mean and then rich. You know what I mean? Like Gossip Girl is a documentary as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it is a searing portrait of a time. Well, you that was your experience. That like literally they based that show off of your I school. I know. It was Dalton. I mean, and one of the boys in Gossip Girl, do you know, he played like, I didn't really watch the show. He played someone's little brother. Yes, yes. And he was my voice teacher's son. And I babysat him a couple times in exchange for, like, I pretty much would, like, get a free lesson out of it. Uh -huh. And he was, and at the time, you know, he was, like, eight years old, ten years old. I'm babysitting him. And he's like, what's your vocal range? <laughs> My mom says you're good. And I was just like, thank you so much, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Were you so in high school? I assume you were a very good student, just based on the trend of you being good at spelling and grading <laughs> tests in elementary school. Yes, I was. I was. I, but I also like didn't really, you know, I didn't fuck with the stuff I wasn't very good at. Like math and science was never my jam, except for bio. I took AP bio my senior year. Like, that I knew, but, like, math and everything else, I was like, I can't. Yeah. But then, you know, English, history, all that other stuff, it was like, you know, AAA. Right. And I was, like, good friends with, like, I think now, like, when I think back on it, I was literally just thinking yesterday, I'm like, I gotta see what Karen Luton is up to. She was an English teacher who I loved. <laughs> and, like, those are the people I think about. A couple yeah. of nemeses. And I, yes. and also Greta, I was like, why hasn't, how, why haven't any of my high school, either frenemies, nemeses, former friends why has no one written me about my netflix half hour <laughs> i am waiting for people from the past well, to come I, to me i say on this show all the time you can my number i am not famous yet yet to change my number uh -huh. it's, it's approaching yep. i'm waiting the day that i have to change it but until <laughs> then you can always contact and apologize it's exactly. never, and I say this every episode, it is never <laughs> too late to apologize. Not one has reached out to you about it. No, and it's like, and it, I'm with you. I've had the same phone number for 21 years. I got yeah. my first cell phone in 2001, freshman year of college. What was and it? I have had like a Nokia flip moment. Love that. It might not have even been a flip. It might I have mean, just been like a that straight Nokia, up. That battery, honey, we're talking 36 hours. We're oh, talking. That's, that's the thing. People don't re think about it. It's like, you had that phone. You never had to plug it in. <laughs> Remember that game Snake? Yes. I, I mean. Come on. That was the height of height of gaming. Okay. Yeah, peak. I was so bad at it, but I wanted to be good. It was <laughs> no. an amazing. Nokia's 
that battery, whatever they were doing was brilliant. Let's go back to that. I yes, would love yes. that. You know, your phone was always reliable. I know. I know. And you th- never had to worry. I mean, granted, I don't think you had bars a lot of places. No, you Do you know didn't. what I mean? Like, we didn't have the towers <laughs> we have now. But, you know, if you're in a major city, you're like, oh, yeah, I can use this phone forever. Wait, so you did not have a, hi- a f- cell phone in high school? No. No, no, At no. all. At all. I mean, that's that's so crazy. But you're, I know you're younger than me, though. I am younger than you, but I think what's crazy to wrap my head around is like, yeah, I in high school, I had a cell phone. And I think about like when you, but I guess it's from when you're in a city, like when you had to get in contact with your mom, would you just like use a pay phone? Yes. Yeah. That's like, yeah. that would be what you would do. Yeah. You just use a pay phone. You borrow a phone. You yeah. go into a place and say, can I use your phone? And yeah. people used to let you. People yeah. used to let you. Yeah. Nowadays, you ask to use a phone. Someone's like, you're a murderer and I want nothing to do with you. Correct. When did you graduate, though? Like, 05, 06? Oh, I, I'm, I'm even younger than that, honey buns. I graduated in 08. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to go. Um, I didn't realize <laughs> I was talking to a child. Oh, and you and know I we- don't respect people. You were, <laughs> You don't even know nothing. I was an adult when 9-11 happened. You were. You were a full-on adult when 9-11 happened. I was grown. If it makes you feel any better, I have people that come on this show and they're like, I graduated in 2017. And I'm like, what? Ew. I'm like, that's I, yesterday. That's literally I, last year. I can't believe you talked to them. <laughs> I don't want to know anything someone who graduated high school in 2017 has to say. I'm like, you don't know nothing about nothing. It is funny to to hear the perspective shift, right? It's like, okay, you've been out of high school now for 21 years, you know? Yeah. And yeah. in that time... The way that you felt five years out of high school, the way that you felt 10 years out of high school, and now like 20 plus years removed, it really is like a fully different perspective, you know? I think it for me happened pretty quick, actually. If, if Even like I think the way I felt, because basically when I got to college and I started to do the things I actually wanted to do, I started to, you know, uh, do improv and right. sort of and start acting in shows and started kissing boys. Yeah. I realized like. Oh, I, there was, you know, in high school, and I think we all kind of do this to some extent, but I think in particular, go, me going to Dalton, I thought I was the problem. I thought there was something inherently wrong with me. And then I left that and was like, oh, I'm not gross and unlovable. Oh, it was Dalton. Do you know what right. I mean? And then, like, yeah. I kind of look back, and so now I really don't fuck with it. I think if you had asked me at the time, you know, I would have been a little more like, um, it was great. I'm so lucky. You right. know, and I and I am like I I do think there's a lot I got out of that time in terms of well, one, <laughs> I often say like, you know, m- you know, to become an actor and a writer, who knew I would spend my my entire life being judged by rich whites? Right. So in a way, Dalton really did prepare me. <laughs> like there is no <laughs> amount <laughs> like no casting associate can scare me after I dealt with <laughs> Okay? <laughs> I said her full government name. My bad. Again, she's fine. We can we can bleep it. We can bleep it. <laughs> we'll we'll bleep we'll bleep it out. But it's like, I mean, were you the only non-white student in your class? No, nah, it was like me. There was like by high school, so we were a grade of a hundred and eight. I think there were six black kids, and then there were a handful of Asian students, and then there were probably also like four Hispanic students. Sure. You either started in seventh grade or ninth grade if you were like a POC. And so that's the thing. I, when I started in sixth, I was like alone. It was like me and one other person or two. And then in – actually, no, there might have been more than six by high school. And then in high school, there was like this influx of black kids. And then it became like a – there was like a clique of black kids. And you know, do you know that book – why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Yes, yes. That was like written by a Dalton parent. Like I knew her son, the woman who wrote that book. That's because it was like crazy. That life. And I wasn't like in with the black kids either. You know what I mean? So it was like, did you feel like you were a floater in high school, or did you just really feel like you were just completely on the outside? I was a floater. I definitely had a group of friends. Yeah, but. I was able to, you know, by high school kind of mix and mingle. Like my eighth grade 
we didn't really have a super it was like eighth grade wouldn't be the same if was like right. a thing <laughs> and it was like by that point it was like eighth grade wouldn't be the same if Naomi wasn't friends with everybody in the in middle school. That's so nice. So I was definitely like a hey hey. I would like talk to people, you know, like younger and stuff like that. I like learned pretty um early. It was like oh, you better get funny. I always say well, like, there's the only reason why I do comedy. No other reason why. I mean, if there's one thing that these like super elite private schools will teach you is the power of networking <laughs> and it is like it does click in when you're in the eighth grade and you're like oh I need to be funny so that I will be able to like span across these people and have a point of entry and like understand how this disgusting ultimately like <laughs> dog eat dog world works like yeah it's it That's does true. it's it's intense I but think then, like, people... I don't keep up with them. Do you still like? Do you still keep in touch with people from high school? Fuck no! They all fucked me over. <laughs> Fuck you have... ever. <laughs> they all fucked me over. Yeah, they all turned against me my senior year. That's a story for another time. Uh, okay, because but... you were in it. You were in a clique with some with some bitchy girls, and then they turned the tables. Well, I never actually got fully in the clique with the bitchy girls. And then I did some shit that really pissed that click off. And then mm. that click was like, oh, it's over, capital O, V E R. <laughs> and I'm oh friends with gosh. one person from my high school. I'm, or that's not true. I'm friends with other people. Different, that, I was always friends with the older kids, okay. like the older grades. Yeah. I have one friend. He's been on this podcast, Patrick Foley. He's a playwright, he's wonderful. And he's my only friend from my actual grade. Mm -hmm, but everyone mm -hmm. else, no, I'm not in touch with anyone else that I went to high school with. And like, yeah. the reason why I, I like doing this podcast is just because I do think that for a lot of us, we learned things about ourselves, or it has informed certain aspects of our personalities that have like stayed with us until for the rest of time. Because I do right. think that we're like little balls of clay when we're 14 <laughs> to 18 yeah. years old, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. And especially when we're in these schools where like you went you were in high school with kids whose parents were like some of the most powerful people in the country, you know, right. Right. and that's staggering and weird. Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. But then it was also like it's also just so interesting. You know, I think at an early age, I learned some things, you know, for better or for worse. But I realized, you know, it's funny, like when people you know how we had the civil rights remix of 2020 summer 2020 and like where people were like wow did you know stuff is unfair yeah it is like yes. i grew up in a pre-gentrified harlem and went to school in the upper east side every day i could just ride the bus and know things were unfair and right. i mean that to say like you know in new york at that time it was like all the white people cleared off public transportation at 96th street right like because that was the cutoff Right. And then it became a, a little no man's like I'm still nice. And then, you know, and it was in watching over the years as that kind of changed and crept up or, you know, you're going down Fifth Avenue and watching as Fifth Avenue goes from like Spanish Harlem to Museum Mile to. Right. You know what I mean? And you're like, yeah, shit's yeah. fucked. Yeah. And it's like and it was just like, you know, and to be around people who, you know, they had this level of wealth. Like, it was wild to me that you could live in New York City and still not know stuff, right? Because a lot of people who went to Dalton, they lived in a 20-block radius. Right. And so they didn't they didn't know the rest of the city. Like, I remember when I first started there, again, it was middle school, but kids, this guy, he's like, can you take me on a tour of Harlem? Or someone coming up to me and being like, I know how to rap. This was apropos of nothing. No. And they began to sing the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song. And it was just like, okay. Okay, this is it. This is a vibe. This is what people are. This is what the youth are like. This is the youth of America. These are the most the children of the most powerful people who are now, you know, they're probably living off the interest of a trust funds. You know what 100%. I'm saying? One hundred percent. Yeah. No, they're not even. They're not even touching. They're not touching the principal. They're nope. not touching the. They're touch. There's only the little income that they're making off their investments. Yeah. Yeah. Do you Insane. think? Do you think that? Well, one. There are kids that, yeah, grew up in New York City that literally never left the Upper East Side, whose yeah. parents would probably not let them yes. even go to your house. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a bestie who lived on the Upper East Side, and 
it would have been it would have been high school, and she was coming over so we could watch an NSYNC concert on TV because we were Classic. real NSYNC heads. And her parents dropped her off at my house, and it was like you sixteen. And yeah. they like came to the door, came what? inside, like they needed to know what was happening. And what? I had been to her house, you know, a bunch of times because she was close to school. So, you know, we'd walk over there, but it was like a big deal. And I remember that like, oh, shit. That also makes you feel like shit. Or did it not? I didn't know until a little bit until later. Like in the moment, I did think, oh, wow, her parents had to bring her. But it, it did go with her being sheltered. Right. At the time. You know, but it was also, and I think she was a little embarrassed too, where it's like, you do not have to come to the door, you know? Like, right, 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 right. <laughs> like, I can walk myself up to the house. Exactly. But, um, you know, I knew, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, she ain't never been north of 96th Street. They got to oh. make sure I don't live in a crack den. Oh God. <laughs> did you, did you party in high school? Did you like drink or smoke or anything like that? No, no. We were like good kids like i remember was it my six not 16th birthday one of my birthdays we like watched billy madison at a friend's <laughs> house like that was our big thing was ordering chinese food and watching billy madison <laughs> i had one birthday party it was like my 16th birthday and we had it at like a cool place downtown but it was just like you know dancing and food and cake and stuff it still was it was never it was never wild you know i wasn't yeah it, but you know people were but i just was not in that crew um, we are going to hear very quickly from my gorgeous advertiser or whoever is doing that today. And whatever product I'm telling you to buy, you should buy it. So uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. I do think that I miss, I had a birthday at the JCC. Okay, we love it. When I was like, I think it might have been my eighth birthday party, and it was one of my favorites because it was just pizza and cake, and then people <laughs> would just dance in the middle of like tables, and I was like, yeah. that's what a birthday party should be. It I should know. be cake, it should be <laughs> one type of food, <laughs> and then it should just be dancing, and that's yeah. it. That's all we need. And it should be two hours. Like, yeah. that's what I love about little kid birthdays. It's like, you got a two hour window. Yeah. <laughs> come and then get the hell out. That's come. what I miss. <laughs> you know, nowadays as an adult, your party is like, you kicking people out at 2 a.m. And it's like, no, leave, leave. Um, is there, when you look back to high school, is there like one memory, one moment where you're like, this is my quintessential Naomi high school experience? Oh my God, there was, there was this boy named Adam who is now a married gay man um, and Shout I believe working as a professional dancer Gorgeous. and he and I were like really good friends and in Dalton, like I think it, you would have um, labs, which were free periods. And then when you were a senior, you could actually leave school for those free periods. So, you know, we'd like go get food or something like that. And my quintessential moment was like, we're sitting out there and Adam and I were like besties and we're like always hanging out. And he was like, very cute, very fun. And I was like, and it was me basically being like, I have a crush on you and would like to date you. And he was like, I do not feel that way about you. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> and then I like, I think got up and left and then like cried for a while. And then like, we didn't talk for a day or so. And I will say to his credit, and this is like, wow, I'm like Adam, you're still a real one. He and I were like still friends after like maybe the next day he was like, he was like, can we talk again? You know? And it was like, and it was just like, fine. Yeah, we can talk again. But it was like me professing my love to some delicate white boy who was um, not having it. Okay. Uh, did, did you feel awful after or did you feel okay? No, no, I feel awful. Again, this is why Ani DeFranco was such a touchstone. Um, I was constantly pining. I discovered Ani in high school. There was this girl who came in. She, like, my freshman year, and she looked like Ani DeFranco in that movie Foxfire, yes. which could be before your time. I know. Well, I I also was a big Ani DeFranco. Like, I, not Ani DeFranco per, 
per se, but in that genre of like emotional yes. women singer yes. songwriters, typically yes. lesbians. Like uh-huh. that was very much my wheelhouse. I was a yes. big Tegan and Sarah person. Mm. Like again, you graduated oh eight exactly. Bell and Sebastian, very mm-hmm. big for me. But anyway, you know, I no, understand but I, I, the emotional. I also messed it up because she didn't look like Ani. She looked like Angelina Jolie in Foxfire mm. where she had like shaved head but bangs. And Love. she was like, and of course, like and, and her, um, she was Hispanic and she was like, and you know, again, freshman years, like when a lot of new people came in there and mm. she was just like, so and I was like, I must know you. Right. And so mm. then we became friends and like, oh, her life was chaos and cray. And I was like, I need it. But she was the person who introduced me to Ani. Wow. And so, you know, that was freshman year of high school. And then, of course, like I'm down that rabbit hole devouring it. And so, you know, that was like every every feeling I ever had. Yeah. You know, Um, and so, yeah, it was always my God, the crushes, honey, the like, like it's to the point where like I will say, you know, as someone who's been in a relationship for 12 years, I do not miss liking like that feeling of crushing or liking someone yes because it was very all-consuming for me I was that kind of person and it was like if you didn't like me it was like I'm unlovable and I'm gonna die alone yes I mean I speak I've spoken about this before on the podcast but like I had two very serious high school boyfriends and the love that I felt (laughs) it was it was Sickening. It was like it was so all consuming that it was like, yeah, it, it, it was to your gut. It like got yeah. into your bones. It was like a <laughs> damp, damp winter's day. It literally it's like and you can't shake it and it becomes all you think about. Oh, my God. It's like, did you you had aim, I assume. Yes, of course. And the feeling of like when you could set, remember when you could set alerts for yes. hearing when people were to join or like log on? That door creak, that, that door creak, that oh. door creak had me and running to the computer. <laughs> yes. Who the is door- it? <laughs> Ridiculous. The door creak chills down my spine made me feel like I had to pee. Like that's every time the door would creak. And then when it's not the person you want it to be, you're like, well, this fucking sucks. <laughs> it's crushes love in high school is a, it's heroin. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I just didn't. It's funny, but it's like it was also like that way through college and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, coming back to New York after college. And that to me is like oh, just a whole nother animal. Right. Because. When you're in those confined spaces of college and high school, you're going to see the person a lot, like whether you like it or not and whatever, like the fallout is, you have to deal with it. Whereas like in the real world, it was just like, wow, it's like you were inside me and now you just disappeared on the Q train. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like once you're an adult, it was like, damn, was that a specter? It's terrifying. Did you have sex in high school? No. No, no, no. No. Did I didn't you lose. kiss? I kissed like one boy who didn't go to my school. He was like a family friend. L- classic. It's always the family friend. <laughs> and it was like maybe two weeks or something. Yeah. And then it, we ended up going to the same. He was a year older than me. We ended up at the same college. That's- and then, and like I was like homesick and sad like my first week or something. And I'm in my dorm, and then he knocks on my door, and he's like, my mom told me to come see you because your mom <laughs> said you were sad. I was like, how did anyone think this was helpful? He's That's like, cool. really awful. <laughs> That's so bad. Oh, my God. Is that a door knock I hear? Why, yes, it is. We are now in the high school guidance counselor's office, and I am your high school guidance counselor, which everyone agrees I would be an amazing high school guidance counselor. (laughs) I would tell everyone to grow up, get a fucking life, and then I'd make them all look at my tits. So... (laughs) <laughs> um, Naomi, in this part of the show, we like to heal a trauma of the past, okay. you know, okay. whether yes, that's saying that. 
fuck you to someone, whether that's apologizing for something. But I feel like we have a lot of more fuck yous to say this episode than we do <laughs> apologies, just simply based on some facts, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you can yield this time however you would like. And then once we are done, you know, talking about it and working it out, you never have to think of it again. And maybe you don't even think of it now, but you never need to think of it again. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to say yes. to the seven children who were not invited to my 16th birthday party because I said <laughs> it's my party and I'm not having anybody that I don't want. You need to just not even play victim, okay? Because you weren't invited <laughs> because you were trash, okay? And quite honestly, you may be trash still, but you most certainly were trash in 2000, okay? <laughs> and for you to come up and be like, I hear you're having a party. <laughs> Have a good time. I know what you meant. And it's the fact that you even talk like that that made you bad and wrong. <laughs> okay? The sick, the the my, the psychosexual mind games of a rich white woman. <laughs> to know that you become so evil so young. There's a reason why I didn't want you around me. Okay? Because you could have killed me. You could have killed me. You were all fire starters, like the Stephen King novel. <laughs> and you just need to know that you weren't invited for your own good and for mine. The psychosexual mind games of the white woman yes. is actually the title of your second book. <laughs> <laughs> And that's fair. They are trash. Yeah. Yeah. And they probably still are trash. I and mean, sometimes I you think. just know, you know, sometimes you just know. But here's a question for you, because here's a theory I have. If you were able to be that mean, and I don't mean teasing. This is what I mean, like those like kind of mind games, that sort of yes. like, no, tr- you know like, what I mean? Like that yes. different level. Yes, yes, yes. To me, if you're that evil and like kind of cunning and fucked up at 14 i personally don't think you get better you You just get get stronger right yes no no no. and here's this kind of goes back to what i was saying like up top you and i both went to private pretentious high schools filled with the byproducts aka children of uh powerful people many of whom are narcissistic freaks (laughs) so i think that when you have that 14 year old 15 year old extremely manipulative Mm -hmm. you know child that it's not just the innocence of you know uh kid teasing it becomes much more layered and much more divisive to me that's learned from your environment you're Mm -hmm. picking that up from your like you know DeSantis supportive parents (laughs) and you're then implementing that into the rest of your life because that's what you see set up for you too so I do think you do just get stronger and I think a lot of the times these people do only become worse (laughs) and I think it's very rare that any of these people are given a moment of self-reflection because the world is so built for them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can like keep yourself enshrined in like whatever your idea of a safe space is till the end of time. Yes. You know, and it's funny because I have seen some be like, you know, when people will come up, of course, New York Times style section or (laughs) um, something where I'm like, oh my God, so many of you look the same. now. Like you all kind of look alike. And it's like, even when they were like 25, they looked 40, if that makes sense. You know, because like when you're very skinny, your bones really pop. Yeah. And it was just like stuff like that where I'm like, and it's like you all kind of wear. And it was funny because it's obviously the two versions of it. There is the like, um, hedge fund corporate lawyer kind of 
c- corporate lawyer khaki. Yeah. And then there is like the downtown art version. Sure. Dirty. But your clothes cost the same amount. Yes. You know what I mean? But it was like the yes. two styles. But it was like, you're still that person. And I'm like, you look the exact same. It's the, the same thing. The exact same. It's wild to me. Wow. Well, to those that didn't get invited to the 16th birthday party, <laughs> sorry, not sorry, honey. Absolutely. I'm sure you're fine. You yeah, know what I mean? Sh- <laughs> but what if, like, that's what started them hating black people? They were like, a black girl didn't invite me to her birthday party. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, If you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? He ain't shit. That about anybody at any given time. Because when I think about the time, and we've already talked about it, but I I have got to underscore. If I think about the mental and emotional time I spent thinking about a guy talking on the phone to the guy, (laughs) your girl could have been a woman in STEM. Okay, I could have solved some diseases by now. If I had spent some of that youth focusing on other stuff, I think I could have changed the world. I think we wouldn't have cancer right now. I think we would have gotten prep 20 years earlier if I had just not been thinking about it. I I, I understand that, that gripe. I have the same advice to myself. Like, don't. It's not that deep. Like, don't yeah. invest your whole entire emotional well-being into these. Bo- they're boys. It's yes. like yes. they are boys that are horny boys <laughs> that are literally thinking with their fucking balls <laughs> that haven't even dropped yet. Right. And right. it's crazy how we let that come into yeah. our brain and and then take it over like a sickness i know and when you think back on them too and it's like god could could you imagine like just imagine the scrawny white flesh i was attracted to as a teenager (laughs) and it's like you look you go girl girl and i wish i could just like reabsorb the tears just hydrate myself with all the lost tears Oh, God. It's so (laughs) awful. When I think about guys that I thought were hot in high school, and then I look back, I'm like, ah! I'm like, I can't believe it. Girl, there was a boy I was obsessed with. And, like, the greatest (laughs) night of seventh grade was when he danced with me at a bar mitzvah. And literally all my friends watched because they were like, this is is huge. (laughs) And then... So another person from, because a few people from high school went to Wesleyan, where I went to college. And so, and then this guy, he came to like visit a friend and I saw him and I saw him there and he had like a tattoo on his arm of like a football number <laughs> and he was not a jock. Okay. And he had this like stud earring. Like it was somewhere I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I was over here. I said, Jeremy. Okay. I said, I dodged a bullet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Insanity. Insanity. When I will, you know, look back at some people. Also, it's always fun to look back at the hot girls that you went to high school Mm -hmm. with. Not not hot. Not hot now. (laughs) (laughs) Not hot now. And it's (sighs) what we thought. Also, it's so of the time like Uh whatever we thought was hot you know when you were in high school between like what 1997 and 2001 like the parameters for hotness (laughs) were so (laughs) different than what they are now like yes Yes, totally I know (laughs) it's crazy It's also, I think what I love is like when these girls who were the hot girls, when I see that they have like really ugly husbands now, that (laughs) makes me so delighted. It makes me so delighted. It is like a little treat. It's like a little treat. treat. (laughs) And it's also like, that's just what happens when like you're ruled by white supremacy. You just like picked him because he was like a rich white from the right right family. Right. But I was like, oh my God, he is literally walking recessive traits and (laughs) I can't. But I find it delightful. Yeah, when you're like, the rosacea is popping. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
the receding hairline on yes. deck. Yes, yes. It's everything. <laughs> when I think about the the things that were like attractive or sexy too, now I look at like, you know, you know Xavier, that high school in New York. My Parsons was like around the corner from it. Okay, and. Even when I was in college, I would see these kids that I swear are just now they're just looking older and older. <laughs> and yeah. I would see some of these like lacrosse boys or like field hockey girls and they would all look like they were like 27. <laughs> and I think that now when I think about your crush when you were in high school or even mine when I was in high school, like we all just looked so young. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look like actual children. Yes. And even you didn't. You had a cell phone, okay? So you were looking yes. 22. So don't <laughs> pretend like you. I, I, was I do smoking, imagine you. I was smoking cigarettes on my cell phone. Like, okay, having I having imagine calls. you as a little. I imagine you as like a little high strunk businesswoman. I I'm, did wear. <laughs> I had a panache for suits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That is exactly what I imagined. When I was seven years old, I remember to my mom, I was like, if I'm not an actress, I want to be a lawyer. Cool, and in my wow. mind, I was like, that that was it. And there are so many yeah. pictures of me like posing with the newspaper. Because I was <laughs> like, this is a, like the newspaper suits hats yep. yep these are the makings of yep. a powerful woman right 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 that's gorgeous <laughs> that's gorgeous suits in a newspaper and what were you even reading you don't even know you no! were holding the financial was, times yeah you don't even know what it said no and i was like obsessed with my dad's briefcase i was like i would have been the girl in high school that thought it would have been cool to carry a briefcase but like thank god oh, my mother was god. like you can't carry a briefcase <laughs> Oh, wow. I wish you would carry a briefcase, uh, me Greta. Me too. Me too. Um, did you go to prom? I did. What did I you wear? I did. I wore, my mom made me a dress because we found a dress at Macy's that looked really cute, but it was black. It was mm -hmm. just like straight black, and it was like, no. So then instead <laughs> I wore white, which was like, am I getting married? But it had like a very low back. Mm. Okay? Very low back. Which is only for the youth. Okay. <laughs> and then my my senior year prom date, he went and he wore like a tuxedo suit and shorts, like basketball shorts, which he wore every single day. It was like his thing. And so so when it was time for prom, he was like, you know, I'll wear a suit. And I go, No, I want you to wear shorts. I said, stick with the bit. Yeah. And his and his mother called me and was like, Are you sure you want him to wear shorts? And I was like, <laughs> Yes, it will be hilarious. <laughs> Was he your friend? Yeah, we were friends. He was okay. he was younger than me. He was younger than me, um, but he was he was fun. He was like a, just a friend. Yeah. And so he wore a tuxedo, like, like yeah, like jacket. a top, like yeah, like the jacket, the tie, the shirt. Yeah. And then black and one basketball shorts. I love that. Yeah. Powerful. Yep. Very powerful. I said, do it. Do I it. I love every second of this. Did you have a favorite teacher? Yes, Karen Luton, my girl. Who and taught you, English. Mm, were you a part of um, clubs and stuff like that? You had to have been. Kind of, but not too much. Like, I don't really remember how much I was like. I was a cheerleader for like a hot minute. Was and that? The che <laughs> Dalton cheerleaders were just like all the black girls and then two white girls with rhythm. <laughs> and that was our vibe. And it was like. <laughs> and, and then. And that was basketball season I did because I was like, I'm not trying to be out here for football, like no. outside dancing. Are you crazy? And then one one year I was like the manager of boys JV soccer. Me and my uh, friend Emily, we managed JV because our friends were on it. And we were like, sure, we'll do it. Yeah. And we would like be in charge of orange slices. Oh, I mean, I was the manager of boys varsity basketball, just so you know. And I briefly <laughs> did a stint managing baseball but i only did that because i wanted to go to other schools to oh. check out the boys at other <laughs> schools so that was the only reason why that's amazing that's amazing 
I'm mean, very impressed. To manage is powerful. To manage is powerful. Oh, right. And then I was the he- in charge of the performing arts committee. I was going to so say, did, did you do theater in high school? Not really. I was like in one play. It was like a friend senior play. I never, I never booked it. I'm, mm-hmm. To this day, I'm still living it, Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> theater teacher. Who just didn't think I had the stuff. And it's like, you know what, Bob? I'm out here book busy blessed. Okay. <laughs> this is the theme for for all of my most successful friends, <laughs> myself included. You are always overlooked and snubbed by your theater head, department head. They say you don't got it. And then immediately you're like, well, this adult says I don't got it. So I guess I don't got it. I guess I don't got it. And then I got to college and I started to actually be cast in things. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, so Bob, you're just a sack of trash. Yeah. You know? Jealous. Just, it's funny, Bob and Randy, because Randy taught dance and Bob taught theater. <laughs> and they were married to each other. And then I did get a little bit of a satisfaction a few years ago, pre pandemic Randy wrote me and was like, we would love for you to come to this like Dalton fundraiser. Mm. Neil Patrick Harris will be there was how she was going to sweeten the pot because I guess his <laughs> kids go there. I don't fucking know. And I was like, and they were like, we'd love for you to do stand up. And I was like, what are you going to pay me? <laughs> yeah. And what did and they, they say? Oh, nothing. They weren't going to give me nothing. And I said, I'm sorry, Randy. No, no. Again, no. like stamps. Dalton knows me, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I would like to be reimbursed. Yeah, I agree. They should reimburse. I got asked to do a 20 minute Zoom set Whew. for my high school during pandemic. Ah! And I simply was like, this is just a no. This is <laughs> it would be hard enough to say yes in person, and it's right. a hard no doing it alone. I, nothing was worse than doing Zoom comedy shows. Right. Talk about right. completely breaking the form and like how it should be taken in. Yeah. Never Zoom comedy. Oh, were they going to pay you? No. Oh, uh, what do they want? Like, what were they trying to do? <laughs> like, I don't understand what they were doing. It was like for alumni to like log on and like be Ugh. entertained. And it's like, Ew. it's like, honey, watch an episode of fucking 30 Rock. Like, <laughs> don't, you know, don't watch 20 minute. What? <laughs> no. Hell. Yeah. You were right. You were right. Did you, um, did you carry a backpack or were you a bad girl? Jansport all the way, baby. There we go. Gotta have that there Jansport. We well, you know, the bag, the bag division, it, mm-hmm. it was a very, it became a status thing. Yes. It was like, you have the long chomp bag, <laughs> or you got the backpack. You know, DK and Y were our bags. Those were the I big bags that. to have in my day. The kids, who, the gals DK had the DK and Y situation. Um, and I was like, that is the height of fancy. And now I know DK and Y is something I could have just gotten at Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <gasps> but yes, they would have like the big yeah, version of that with all their books in it. And I was like, oh my God, your spine, all kinds of out of alignment. Was there clothing items that you remember as like coveting or being like, <laughs> this is my, I look so hot in this or like, I'm dying for this and I never got it. Like, did you ever have any of those? Um, it's funny, you know, clothes were not really my thing because I was too busy thinking I was fat and ugly. Mm. So I wasn't trying to dress. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember, though, for that birthday party of mine where I was like, I've got to, you know, invite everyone but like seven people. I wore like silver jeans. Okay. That's hot. And they were like, like that feeling as though like jeans had been dipped in paint. It yes. was that kind of sensation, which to me is like so 2000. Yes. And no, absolutely no breathing. You're <laughs> getting a yeast infection <laughs> while wearing the jeans. And I was like, you have arrived. It's yes. your party. Like yes. that's what I thought was so cool. Looking. Yes, they were. Oh my God. With like a sheer black top. You know, like maybe a baby tee. That's sexual to me. That is the <laughs> psychosexual of Naomi Ekbergen. <laughs> I think that's powerful. That's a powerful Thank look. Thank you. God, you know, we could do a whole entire part two where we really rip to shreds everyone at the <laughs> institution. <laughs> and maybe I will. We will need to circle back for that. 
perhaps when like the next special of yours comes out and people <laughs> still have not reached out, which I do think yeah. is fucked. Well, can we do something where we just like cold call people from the past? I don't know their numbers, but we'll okay. have to get the producer on it. They'll have to do some research. In and it'll my, be <laughs> in my dream, like when I initially was thinking about this podcast, I was like, wouldn't it be amazing? If we could, in like the guidance counselor section, call people Mm -hmm. out of the blue (laughs) (laughs) that have wronged us. Because like that shit really fucks with you for a really long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's. I would love to be free from it, but maybe I should just be honest and be like... I'm not. I'm still mad at some shit you did in 98. And I will not hang up until I get an apology. (laughs) Um, I'm a survivor. I'm doing, I like, I'm trying to find a therapist and I just talked to a new person. And what I like, I will say what I liked. It was like before our first session, she had me fill out all this stuff. Basically, like, you know, what's your backstory? And literally at one point it was like any additional notes. I just go white school, bad dad. And said, that's it in a nutshell. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we have to unpack. (laughs) <laughs> and that's it that's it still holding on to the same shit you know when will we let it go we'll let it go when it makes us millions of dollars is <laughs> what i'm like once i can fully realize the trauma as the show yep as the movie yep, yep then yep, yep. then it'll be worth something at the end of the day <laughs> but until then it's still scratching at my door Every single morning when I wake up. (laughs) (laughs) Naomi, finally, my last question of the pod is, what was your senior superlative? Did you have senior superlatives? Was that a thing at your school? I don't think we had superlatives. I know it must have been something. Did you have quotes, like senior quotes? My quote was, (laughs) one of them, it was, I can be as good as the best of them, but as bad as the worst, so don't test me. What? That was like a song lyric. And I was like, who was I talking to? Whose song lyric was I think it was like a Biggie Small song. I don't even, girl, I was like, like, what am I doing? I said, who let let this run in print? You were sending a message is what was was happening. You wanted people to know. And then I had an Ani quote and it was like, I fight with love and I laugh with rage. You got to live. Light enough to see the humor and long enough to see some change. That's actually a beautiful quote. That was a good one. That was a good one. I because like we had senior pages at the back of the thing. Each person had a page, and I I feel like I like I think those might have been my two. Yeah, you know, I was the girl that was like two seconds away from getting a senior quote tattooed on them. (laughs) Like I was like I was like yeah, like I should definitely get this quote from Paradise Lost tattooed (laughs) on like my fucking shoulder blade. Thank God I never did. And then like I there was some other quote that like I heard from Almost Famous that was like a Gote quote or something like that. Oh eight, oh eight, and. It's just like, also, thank God I never got some fucking, like, I don't know, like Dave Matthews lyric tattooed (laughs) on me. I did see someone the other day that had Dave Matthews, like, fire dancer symbol tattooed on their ankle. And I was like, I was like, good for you for believing in the band. (laughs) It's like Lisa Traeger's Red Hot Chili Pepper ankle tattoo. Yes, yes. Or there's, do you know that comic Corey... Johnston, who has yes. like the American Dad tattoo yes. on her leg, <laughs> like, yes. and I was like, "We all make choices. We, we make all choices. Make choices. We are living time capsules. <laughs> we are." Naomi, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I am triggered. I am anxious, but I am glad that we went on this journey. Are you? Are you? If you are anxious about anything you said, we can always take it out. Oh, no, no, no. Not anxious about things I said, but oh. I'm just like thinking about high school again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, no. You know, I fully said government names and said, know. we'll deal. <laughs> I'll just let you know this. I love to just completely bring up everyone's trauma from the past, <laughs> leave them with it for their day and say, God bless. <laughs> Thanks for doing this show. I hope you stir on that for an entire day. <laughs> 
No, it, it is anxiety provoking. It does make you sweat. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, but ugh. that ugh. low heart rate, that low heart rate, calories burning. You know, Cal's that's what I think. we're shedding cows right now. <laughs> um, where can everyone find you and watch you and intake you? You can visit me on Instagram at Black Dress Comedy. I don't really fuck with Twitter anymore. You can check out my podcast, Couples <laughs> Therapy, or I Love a Lifetime Movie, which I co-host with the very funny Megan Gailey. And you can watch my half hour on Netflix on season three of The Stand-Ups. Which is so, 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 so funny. Naomi, also iconically my favorite comedian of all time. Wow. Um, honored. I An honor, honor to have you on the show. And also, if you want to come back and we can cold call our arch nemeses, <laughs> I'm happy to do that anytime. We Perfect. will have to lawyer up, but That's I am true. ready for That's that. That's true. They all have legal counsel. Yeah, you know all... every person from high school has got a lawyer on retainer. No, on, that's what I was going to say, on retainer. This is what I mean by we're dealing with a very sinister bunch. <laughs> you know, it's like when you talk to other people that come on the show, they're like, yeah, like I grew up in Wisconsin and now people are school teachers and have like yeah. nice, normal jobs. And I'm like, oh, no, I grew up with like power hungry psychopaths. That yeah, now, like, like the people that QAnon talk about. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, this is like what they're on their message boards talking about. These people. <laughs> Oh, God. What another stunning episode of the Senior Superlatives podcast. Thank you all for listening. Give me five stars. Give me thumbs up because, honestly, I deserve it. Um, and as I say every week, stay cool. Never change. Until next time, ciao. That was a HeadGum Podcast.